Uh, my journey in life is uh, inspired by an understanding that, uh, that I have purpose. And, uh, and when I'm fulfilling my purpose, I'm, I'm smiling and, and excited about life. Także każdy z nas ma jakiś e, talent swój od Boga i jego jest akurat taki, który stara się wykorzystywać i przekazywać dalej ludziom. Hello, I'm Mike Bottom. Run, Forest, Run. Cześć, jestem Bartek Kizierowski, polecam Run Forest Podcast. Run Forest Podcast. Hi Bart, hi Mike. What are we doing? Here? What are we doing? Where are we? Where are we? Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. We've been doing this clinic for three years now and I'm really happy to have you here. Uh, happy uh, that you can drop your knowledge on us. Um, in one, like a nutshell, if you talk about swimming, not sprint or distance sprint, swimming, just swimming in general for young kids, what do you think is the key for them? What do you think? A kid, you know, my son is 11, he wants to get into the sport. What would you tell him? <laughs> you gotta have fun, right? You have to have fun. And, uh, and what is fun for your 11 year old? It's, it's hanging out with his buds, right? So you gotta bring them all in, right? You gotta bring them all in. And I think that. The, one of the secrets to U.S. swimming is all of the, uh, the summer leagues that are all over the country. There's more summer league swimmers in the U.S. than there are all swimmers. Uh, and they come, they come my, my kids swim for a summer league team, and this team has like 400, 500 kids on it. And when they have a meet, you see them running all over there, and, and uh, The, the, the most difficult thing at those meets is trying to get the kids corralled and have them swim because they're running all over, they're having so much fun uh, and every summer they want to do it. Why? They want to do it because their friends are there, because they're, uh, it's a game for them uh, and they have fun. Great. Um, now you, what drives you? You've been coaching for a few years now. I've known you for, what, 20 some. What drives you? What gets you up in the morning? And we just had a we just had a great talk about stroke and everything. And you seem as passionate about it as as when I met you the first day. How do you do that? Do you remember the time when you won the European Championships? Before that, about oh, four or five months ago, you learned a secret about yourself that you told me, and that secret that you told me excited me because what that did was I, I got it that now Bart's, Bart is now starting to learn about Bart. Bart is now growing into someone who doesn't need me anymore. He's learning, he's, he's, he's developed. Do you remember what that was? Yeah. You do? I'm not going to share. You're not going to share it? No, Come go on. ahead. <laughs> I'll share. Well, what you told me was, hey Mike, I have, I got I to gotta focus on certain things during the race. Right? Do you remember that? Yeah. And, and I don't remember exactly what you were focusing on then. I, I think it was you know, hold your water underneath your body. Uh, head position. Head position. Yeah. Yeah. But when you focused on those things during a 50 race, and a 50 race takes 22 seconds or less, it, it took away the nervousness. Yeah. It took away that um, the, the pressure of winning a gold medal. Right? Because all you were doing was focusing on right now what I'm doing right now. Right? That charged me up. Right? That charged me up for, for years. I get that every day. I get that every day from, from, I got a group of sprinters right now, and I have a group of distance swimmers, and I have a group of middle distance swimmers, I got a group of flyers. I get to be the head coach of the University of Michigan team. I have incredible coaches underneath me. I'm, I'm getting that that excitement in my life all of that time, right? Great. Um, you are known, and I can confirm that, as one of the greatest motivators, right? Now tell me a little bit, is there a difference to motivate someone like Duye Draganya or, or Gary Hall or, or any of those spurners that we work with than a distance guy? The task that I had, and that's a great question, and what do I do? with my team, you know, what do I do with my, my coaches? Uh, the ultimate task is to teach those underneath me or those around me this system so that they're acting out what, what I want them to act out. The purpose 
that, that we have together. The difference between motivating a, a distance guy, a D guy, and, and, and a sprinter. Well, you know how it is. It's a distance. A distance person has a different mentality. Absolutely, right. Run Forest Podcast. And what well, was the difference in their mentality? I gotta tell you, they're tougher. Distance swimmer is tougher in a longevity sense than a sprinter. Now, that doesn't mean that a sprinter isn't a, a, a better fighter, right? But it does mean that, you know, what I've learned about distance swimmers, and Michigan has traditionally had an incredible distance uh, program. You know, we've put, uh, you know, three or four uh, finalists at the, at the NC2A level every year. But one of the things that I realize is just how long they have to endure the kind of pain they endure, right? And I don't know if you remember, but I remember swimming a long race and the, the burning in the oh, stomachs yeah. and the legs. I was in Mission Viejo three oh, years. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that'll, that'll kill you, yeah, right? Yeah. So the, the, their motivation is, uh, is a little bit different, right? their motivation and they have a long time to think about their team right they have a lot of time <laughs> they have a lot of time to to uh to think during their race uh and and so mental the mental side of things for them is way different than the mental side for a guy who does a 22 second race right uh, is it in a sense easier to work with a distance guy than a sprinter From the coach's standpoint, you know, I don't think there's an easy. There's, it's not easy either way, right? Because uh, you know, one of the nice things about sprinters is we could spend a lot of time on technique. We could take the time to work on technique um, because our training is in short bouts and short bursts. Uh, and with distance guys, you don't have a lot of time to talk to them about technique. So you have to be creative with that, and that's some of the the, the great. Uh, inventions of, of creativity or the you know the things in the air and uh, the race clubs now use it. Dr. Hall uses uh, talking in the air uh, um, you know being able to use video we use video right on the wall so that uh, when they come in for that 10 seconds they're able to see an underwater shot of, of what they're looking like uh, so those are things that you have to do and the other thing is you have you know with the distance guys You got to walk up and down, right? <laughs> you can't sit in a chair. You got to walk up and down, and you got to let them know that you're there uh, the whole time. Uh, so. Lee Irvin, Gary Hall Jr., Dewey Dragania, Michael Kavik, Bart Kizarowski. I had the mindset of this is the only way to do this, right? We've been organizing these clinics for a few years now. How important do you think it is to? to have these sort of meetings and have um, people like you come in and sharing things. This yeah. is uh, Swim 2024. I think it's key, Bart. I think it's key. And you're doing a great job. You guys are doing a great job uh, of pulling people in here to bring in different ideas. And, and I think that uh, accepting the new ideas accepting and understanding that in order to get better you have to make change i mean we we, t we talk to our, our swimmers every day you want to get better you got to make a change you got to make a change right? now does that change sometimes go the other direction yeah right and sometimes it doesn't stick you have to do it over and over again um having a speaker like myself come in uh and talk to people uh is going to make a difference, but the, the real difference will happen if people will embrace a, a way of thinking of making changes and get creative within themselves, right? Uh, like I said, uh, I said earlier that we, we, we have four new drills, three or four new drills that we put together this last year, right? And what I talk to, to the swimmers about is, hey, here's what we're trying to do, right? Show them a video, here's where we're going. I need a drill in order for you to get an understanding of, of these points, right? Uh, and I've had, you know, there's, there's, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow, and I think it's really important uh, for, for the coaches to understand that the swimmers can, can help, help the change, right? But the coaches themselves have to understand that they have to change, right? Um, or the swimmers will never get it. Mike, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your knowledge again with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know what, Bart? I want to tell you something. What I'm going to share tomorrow 
is stuff that I've been working on since uh, Caleb was was kind of came to the surface, and I saw a different stroke in him, and that stroke, same stroke showed up in a lot of different people, uh, and it's a different sprint stroke, uh, and and we figured it out. I, we know how to teach it, and I'm going to share it with your coaches because I'm sharing it with you. Right? This the only reason I'm here is because of you, and you need to know that, and and you need to know that that this guy is is worth my heart and everything I know, and I'm going to give it to you. Thanks, Mike. Run Forest Podcast.